Good day. Welcome, everyone. So I thought we would do something a bit different. Recently, I ran a course at my local makerspace for Raspberry Pi for beginners. So after I did that, it was a five-week course, an hour and a half each time. And after doing that, I loved it so much teaching and helping others with learning all things Raspberry Pi. That's when I thought I would share it with you for absolutely free. 100% free. I don't expect anything from anyone. I just hope you enjoy and maybe take something away from this course that I put together. But feel free to hit that like button, that subscribe button, and there is a link in the description. If you really do want to donate some money, please do. I'm not going to say no if you enjoyed this content. On element14.com, on the link in the description, you will find all the information you will need uh, with the PDF there, uh, all the Python files, uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, um, writing your first programs. You can just kind of look at them and be able to copy and paste them over into your own projects and then go from there. So head over to element14.com with that link. Like I said, you'll see a brief description, probably see this video headed in there and then the files below it as I will be sharing this with the community there as well. And speaking of community, thank you element14 for the now many years of support uh, with my adventures and projects that I have uh, done in the last uh, four or five years on the community. Uh, I would like to give a huge thank you uh, to Tariq, Randall, Pat, Chris, Kelly, Max, Dan, and all the other Element 14 Presents guys, uh, the crew there, and everyone else involved in helping um, spread the word on our projects. Um, if it wasn't for you, I still wouldn't be doing this today. I'm pretty sure I would just be doing it in a dark room with not so much around me. So you've made me clean up my workbench. So thank you. I am by far not an expert on the Raspberry Pi. I am learning every day something new when it comes to the Raspberry Pi, as I do use it every day, either on my Raspberry Pi 4 desktop or on my workbench with a project that I might be working on. So just keep that in mind. I'm not an expert. I'm just a guy that enjoys the Pi. So I hope this will help you along the way, and I hope you enjoy. Now that we have that out of the way, any questions or comments, please feel to put them in, down below there or head over to element14.com from the link in the description and post your comments there where I will definitely see them and make sure to respond to you or another community member will be able to help you as well there. So here we go, on to the learning. Raspberry Pi for beginners. What is a Raspberry Pi? A Raspberry Pi is a tiny computer about the size of a credit card. The board features a processor, RAM, and the standard hardware ports that you find in most computers. The features a Raspberry Pi has means you're able to do most things a desktop computer can do, and sometimes more. Types of Raspberry Pis. So the Raspberry Pi 1 was released in February of 2012. Uh, the CPU was the ARM 1176JZF-S. It had a 700 megahertz single core with 512 megs of RAM and the 256 megabyte version as well. The GPU contained the Broadcom Video Core 4 and the storage was the SDHC slot, the micro SD. So the SD and the micro SD card slots on the Model A and, and B+. Plus. USB ports, there were two on the Model B. Uh, Wi-Fi, no Wi-Fi was built in on this model. But this model is definitely great because you can do a lot of things with it still. Even eight years ago, 
I still use this board to this day. We've got the Raspberry Pi 2, released in February 2015. It contained a CPU speed of 900 megahertz. It did contain the quad core processor on it, one massive gig of RAM. Once again, it contained that Broadcom Video Core 4. The storage was a micro SD card slot and it had four USB ports and once again no Wi-Fi built in. Now for the Raspberry Pi 3. Released in February of 2016, not too long after, it contained the ARM Cortex A53 which was a whopping 1200 MHz quad core with that one gig of RAM. But once again, the GPU stayed as the Video Core 4. It had the micro SD card slot. We got the four USB ports, but now we acquired the Wi-Fi of 802.11n and the Bluetooth 4.1 features for our Raspberry Pis. Finally, the Raspberry Pi 4. Released June 2019, the ARM Cortex A72 CPU packed with 1500 MHz quad core with awesome revisions to the RAM being 1, 2, and 4 GB versions. Right now, you're seeing this all on the 2 GB version, which I do all my main desktop work on. So, a 4 GB would be great, but a 2 is doable. Uh, the GPU has finally been upgraded to the Video Core 6 at 500 MHz. It still has the micro SD card slot, the USB 2.0, we have two of them, and two USB 3.0 ports. Now the Wi-Fi has stayed the same, but now we've acquired Bluetooth 5. The Raspberry Pi Zero was released November of 2015. It had the ARM 1176JZFS-S. Speeds up to 100 megahertz. It's the single core. This is equivalent of the Raspberry Pi 1. It does have the Broadcom Video Core 4, the micro SD card slot, one USB port, and now we have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability on it. Raspberry Pi 3 Plus Compute Module was released January of 2019 and that contained the ARM Cortex A53 with speeds of uh, 1.2 gigahertz quad core with that one gig of RAM. Uh, once again, the GPU was that Broadcom Video Core 4. Storage options though for it you now have the option for an 816 or 32 gigabyte emmc flash memory and then we had the one usb port direct from the bcm 2837b0 chip so wi-fi once again the 802.11n and the bluetooth 4.1 so at the time of me writing this uh um course these were the prices that i had found so time has gone by a little bit but for the most part you'll get an idea so as you can see raspberry pi one you can find used for 20 30 bucks on uh on ebay and this is it all in canadian prices just so you are aware um, raspberry pi two you can get on newark.ca uh, and uh, that's going to be about 56.28 but when you can get a Raspberry Pi 3 for only $46.55 on Newark or the Raspberry Pi 4 for $46.55 or $58 or $73.15. Kind of a hard choice there, right? You kind of got to go with what you think. With the older Raspberry Pis, always best to try to find a used one that's barely been used. Um, and just you acquire them here and there. Or... Yeah, they're not hard to find. Someone's always got one kicking around. And uh, definitely uh, snag them when you can get them for cheap. They're, and they're already cheap, though. That's the thing. Uh, so the Raspberry Pi Zero I found from $25 to $34.99 on eBay and Newark. 
and then the Raspberry Pi compute module uh, we can get on Newark for about 5320 or as a kit with the I.O. board which would be needed would be 150 to 170 dollars Canadian. Choosing the right Pi for your project. When people talk about the Raspberry Pi they usually have an idea of a small credit card computer that has various I.O. parts and can replace a PC for most typical applications including document writing, surfing the web, and writing programs. However, as it turns out, there is no single computer called the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi refers to a series of computers produced by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So you have decided that you're going to design and build a Raspberry Pi project, but you're not sure what Pi is right for you. Luckily for you, we'll be looking at different Pi models on the market, compare them, and see how each Pi is unique in its own way. Decide your requirements. When it comes to the process of making a decision, you usually write down your requirements. Computers are no exception. Your first task is to determine what is most important for your project. Such requirements can usually be reduced to the following list. Speed, processing power of the system. Memory, how much RAM and ROM or hard drive space the system has. Size and weight, the physical size and weight of the computing system. Cost, the financial cost of the system. I.O. How much I.O. support is available. Speed. Speed is sometimes one of the most important factors in computing scenario. The faster the computer is, the more work it can do before slowing down and become unresponsive. The Raspberry Pi range of computers is very fast compared to microcontrollers such as PIC, AVR, and STM, but there is a noticeable difference between Pi computers. The first Raspberry Pi computer, the Model B, features a quad-core 32-bit ARM Cortex processor, whereas the cheaper version, which was released shortly after the B, the Model A, has a single-core 700 MHz ARM processor. This means the Raspberry Pi B can do four things simultaneously across its separate cores, but tasks on a single core on the Model B will be approximately 30% faster than on the A. That, however, is one big assumption for many reasons. The later models, such as the Raspberry Pi 3 B, has a 1.2 GHz 64-bit quad-core processor, which is not only faster than the Pi 2, but it can handle larger data sizes. Other Pi computers, such as the Compute Range, have similar core speeds ranging from 700 megahertz to 1.2 gigahertz. Memory. Memory can be critical in a computing environment. If you need to run large programs, for example, operating systems are notorious for using large amounts of RAM. So if one is going to be used, maxing RAM would not be a bad move. The Raspberry Pi A computer has been 256 megabytes and 512 megabytes of RAM, whereas the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3B have one gigabyte. However, this is shared with the GPU. The compute devices RAM sizes range from 512 to 1 gigabyte. Advanced computers having the most memory, therefore, if RAM is important, you may need to look at a top-of-the-range Raspberry Pi computers, such as the Raspberry Pi 3B or Compute modules, or the Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte, or whatever is going to do the trick. Uh, lots of this was written just before the Pi 4 did come out, so... Just take it with it. Size and weight. For most users, this requirement may not apply because all Raspberry computers are already very small and light. However, some projects may have strict requirements, in which case the Raspberry Pi compute may come out on top. However, the compute modules come in DDR-like packages which means 
they need a host PCB to fit into so they can be connected to I.O. devices as well as power. This may end up being larger and heavier than just using a Raspberry Pi A or B. The Raspberry Pi Zero is the smallest Pi computer available that also contains I.O. including USB, HDMI, and SD card slot. However, the Zero has lower RAM and processing capabilities than the Raspberry Pi 3B. I.O. If you want your computer to perform office tasks such as writing letters and sending emails, then using a laptop or PC will be the ideal choice. Raspberry Pi computers are used usually because there is a need for I.O. The Raspberry Pi A and B computers are very good for connecting to external circuits and devices since they contain pin headers. The 1A has 8 GPIO, while the Plus 1A and the B computers have 17 GPIO. The Compute module has the most GPIO with up to 46 GPIO, which makes them useful for industrial application. Interestingly, the Raspberry Pi Zero, despite the cost and size, has 17 GPIO just like the Model B. Networking. Comparing GPIO memory and CPU processing power is all fine and good, but arguably the most important difference between the different Raspberry Pi computers is their network capabilities. The first models, the A and A+, lack any networking capabilities at all, whereas the Model 1B and 2B have an Ethernet port, but not every location has Ethernet access, which is where the Model 3B comes in with an integrated wireless network adapter. Users of the Model 3B who wanted to pass CE and FCC uh, conformity had some issues due to the integrated Wi-Fi IC, which is why the Raspberry Pi Foundation developed the more recent model 3B+, Plus, which houses the Wi-Fi circuitry and a metal shield, and is designed to meet CE and FCC requirements. The Compute Module and Zero module models do not come with internet capabilities, with the exception of the Zero Wireless, which also has an integrated Wi-Fi module. Models when looking at different Raspberry Pi computers available, you may notice that some models have a plus symbol in their name. The inclusion usually indicates improvements in the design. For example, the Raspberry Pi Model A has 256 megabytes of RAM, whereas the Raspberry Pi Model A Plus has 512 megabytes of RAM, a micro SD card slot, and more GPIO. The Raspberry Pi 2 Model B has two USB ports and two mounting holes, whereas the Model B Plus has four USB ports, four mounting ports, and faster CPU, increased GPIO, and less power consumption. So which one? So after exploring these requirements, which Pi should you pick? Raspberry Pi A, uh, use this model for a low-cost project that needs a complete computer with no networking capabilities and decent I.O. support. Raspberry Pi Model B, this model can be used for a project where price is no object and the most powerful Pi is needed. This model also contains easy-to-use I.O. so it's suitable for first Pi projects. Raspberry Pi Compute. This model is best for industrial applications where many I.O. lines are needed. This model also maintains strong CPU capabilities. And finally, the Raspberry Pi Zero. This model is best for an ultra low cost, tiny space constrained project that requires a fully functioning computer and would benefit from wireless connectivity. 
And right here, just giving you that breakdown of the Pi 3 Model B versus the B Plus versus the Pi 4 Model B. So I'm not going to go too much into this, but you can definitely check it out in that PDF file just so you can get a better uh, grasp of what each one is. And there you go. Uh, as you can tell, you can definitely see that power consumption difference starting from 5 volts, uh, 2.5 amps, all the way up to now the Pi 4 being 3 amps. So that's going to be 15 watts of power consumption on a high end. Depends what you're doing. Do you have a powered hub with it? All that kind of fun stuff. Um, if you're interested on power consumption of the Raspberry Pi 4, check out my other videos. I do have a video on that, uh, on multiple tests with that as a Raspberry Pi 4 desktop. Let's go ahead and go through the actual desktop environments for the Raspberry Pi. Raspbian is a Debian-based engineered especially for the Raspberry Pi, and is the perfect general purpose OS for Raspberry Pi users. It employs the open box stacking window manager and the Pi improved X Windows environment lightweight, coupled with a number of pre-installed software, which includes Minecraft, Pi, Java, Mathematica, and Chromium, among many other uh, add-ons that you can add on as well. Raspbian is the Raspberry Pi Foundation's official supported OS and is capable of accomplishing any task you throw at it. OSMC stands for Open Source Media Center. It's a free, simple, open source and easy to use standalone Kodi OS capable of playing virtually any media format. It features a modern, beautiful, minimalist user interface and is completely customizable uh, thanks to the several built-in images that it comes with. Choose OSMC if you run the Raspberry Pi for managing media content. Open ELEC. Open ELEC Open Embedded Linux Entertainment Center is a small Linux-based JEOS, just enough operating system. Developed from scratch to run, uh, scratch to turn PCs into a Kodi Media Center. You can think of Open ELEC as a bare bones Kodi, as it has fewer customization options and limits access to certain areas, example, SSH and is more complex to customize. RISC OS Pi is a unique open source OS designed specifically for ARM processors by the creators of the original ARM. It is neither related to Linux nor Windows and is being maintained by a dedicated community of volunteers. If you want to choose RISC OS, you should know that it is very different from any Linux distro or Windows OS you have used, so it will take some time to get used to. Windows IoT Core uh, is a Windows OS built specifically for the Raspberry Pi as a development platform for programmers and coders. It ain't its aim is for programmers to use it to build prototypes of IoT devices using the Raspberry Pi and Windows 10. It has uh, an emphasis on security, connectivity, creation, and cloud integration. Unlike other titles on this list, you can't use it without running Windows 10 on your PC, as you need Visual Studio on a Windows 10 setup to work with it. Laka. Laka is a free, lightweight, and open source distro with which you can turn even the smallest PC into a full blown game console without the need of a keyboard or a mouse. It features a beautiful user interface 
and so many customization options you might get overwhelmed. It's PS4 like UX, brings style to the Raspberry Pi, so pick it if you're a gamer. Rasp BSD. Rasp BSD is a free and open source image of free BSD 11 that has been pre-configured in two images for Raspberry Pi computers. If you didn't know, FreeBSD isn't Linux, but it works in pretty much the same way as it is a descendant of the research by the Berkeley Software Distribution, and it is among the world's most broadly used operating systems today with the code existing in game consoles like the PS4, Mac OS, and so on. RetroPie. RetroPie is an open source Debian based software library which you can emulate retro games on your Raspberry Pi, PC, or Odroid C1, C2, and, is and it currently stands as the most popular option for the task. RetroPie uh, used the emulation station front end and SBC uh, to offer users a pleasant retro gaming experience, so you can't go wrong with that. Ubuntu Core is the version of Ubuntu designed for Internet of Things applications. Ubuntu is the most popular Linux-based operating system in the world with over 20 plus derivatives, and given that it has an active and welcoming forum, it will be easy to get up and running with Ubuntu Snappy Core on your Raspberry Pi. The new top. OS is a secure Raspbian based web kiosk and digital signage player. It is dedicated to professionals with the need to deploy public internet stalls and digital signage uh, solution using raspberries, raspberry pies. This OS is perfect if you run hotels, restaurants, shops, city halls, offices, museum, etc. and is compatible with Raspberry Pi B, B plus and 2 and probably more by now. So let's go ahead we're going to talk about bootloaders. We have a few different bootloaders as well as just doing an image install uh, for this one here, we're actually going to step through installing with noobs and uh, on uh, we'll, we'll get that set up here shortly and we will go through an install with that on the Raspberry Pi 3 B plus or B. I'm not too sure one of them that I have sitting on the bench here. Uh, we will go ahead and get that installed on there and get it set up for the first time so we can get going on our projects. Preparing your Raspberry Pi. When it comes to getting ready to set up your Pi, there's a few options. Bootloaders, like we showed, uh, where we can select our operating system of choice, which will give us options for multiple different choices of operating systems, or we can download pre-made images to install onto a, uh, an SD card uh, with a program, program like Etcher. And you can find it here at uh, the link here. Uh, another option would be a more advanced setup using something like PyBakery.org, which will install, um, do more things, as, uh, installing packages and different uh, things that you might want. Uh, uh, all the software packages, if you wanted to install uh, Arduino, uh, whatever, a, a bunch of different programs. Anyways, you can just use it to yeah install whatever. If you want to download all the games, you just put all the games on one. Setting up Raspbian, download the SD card formatter tool at sdcard.org forward slash downloads forward slash formatter. Format your micro SD card on a Windows or Mac computer. Download news from raspberrypi.org forward slash downloads. Insert the micro SD card to the Raspberry Pi. Power up and news with noobs. You will have a few choices of operating systems to select Raspbian. Uh, Welcome to Raspberry Pi will appear and then click next through the prompts and select the desired settings. 
Once completed, reboot the Raspberry Pi. Once the updates have completed, that's it. You're now ready to play around on Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi. We are going to go ahead. I've got my two Raspberry Pis on my bench right here. So what we're going to do is I have my USB adapter here, which I will be using. I have a 32 gigabyte micro SD card in there right at the moment. And what I'm going to do is we're going to uh, actually do that setup right now. All right, so we're back in business here. I had to do some battery recharging. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the micro SD card here with the USB drive. And we're gonna get that installed on my Windows computer. So that way we can use the tools to get it set up for noobs on there. And then we'll get it set up, get VNC viewer set up for the Raspberry Pi. And then we'll go ahead and go through the next steps of setting it up. So let's head over to the main computer here. And we're just gonna go over to the Windows machine here. We're gonna head over to the SD card.org forward slash downloads forward slash formatter if you just go to sdcard.org you'll find the files there as well so if we scroll down it's going to give us two options it'll tell us exactly what operating systems are compatible with it and then we just scroll down a little further and choose our operating system so i'll go ahead and download the windows version Go ahead and accept the end user's license agreement here. Save the file. And then once that's done, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to extract it, and then I'm going to install it. And then we'll head over to raspberrypi.org and grab the noobs installation to be able to put onto our micro SD card. Now I've previously had an operating system on this micro SD card, but now we're gonna just wipe it clean. We're gonna go ahead and put a fresh install on it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get this guy installed. Shouldn't take too long, it's not that big of a file. And then we'll go ahead and take our uh, micro SD card here and we'll get that installed onto the unit so we can get it formatted. So I'm going to go ahead and do that while this is doing its thing here. close that guy and there we go so the my boot drive is being picked up and now we can go ahead and format it so I'm gonna call this one um, as pi noobs and we're just gonna run the quick uh, format on this guy. Yes. There we go. We'll go ahead and close that guy. And then we're going to head over to raspberrypi.org. Hit the download section. Here we'll be presented with noobs or Raspbian. I usually grab the Raspbian, but for this video we're going to go ahead and install noobs yeah just because it is quicker you don't need um etcher to install it it's just extract the files drag them onto the micro sd card and then 
load it up. Uh, offline and network install. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and download that one. So this might take a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead. I am going to pause the main camera here, and we'll be back shortly once Noobs is fully downloaded. If you download Noobs Lite, it's just going to download and update as you install it anyway, so you might as well as just download the full install. Just to show you. I'm going to download, show you the size different here, difference here. So we got 37.1 megabytes versus 2.3 gigabytes. Actually, you know what? We're going to go ahead. We're going to put the noobs light on instead. I changed my mind. And then we'll go ahead and uh, just do the smallest install of Raspbian as we can and then we'll update everything once we get it online. Alright, so Noobs Lite has just finished in, uh, downloading so we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up the file here and we're just going to extract it to its own folder and then you'll see here there is uh, should be just a bunch of files in here and then all we're gonna do is select it all copy and then go to our res kinda name that funny but whatever it'll work and then just paste all that stuff into there and then we will eject it and then we'll go ahead and get it installed on the Raspberry Pi I'll do that on the computer behind me, so you might not be able to see it. Uh, so once I get VNC server installed on it, I will go ahead and um, bring it back here. Maybe I'll try to bring my webcam over so you can kind of get a better idea of what's going on. So that's done. I'm going to close that. I'm going to let window that do its thing. All right, so we're going to go back here, and so actually I can probably close out that one for now. I will probably need that guy. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to, which one are we going to use? Let's use, I guess we'll go ahead and we'll use the Raspberry Pi 3 instead of the 3B plus just because later on I will want to add uh, some uh, different uh, uh, hats to this as well as uh, some uh, actual wires and connect it to the breadboard here so we'll just use this one for now uh, just because it's all set ready to rock and roll so we'll go with this one for now So all I'm doing here is I'm just taking my micro SD card here and putting it into the back here now that I've copied all that stuff over. Plug it in there. There we go. So for this one we will need a mouse and keyboard connected. We're going to connect the HDMI cable as well. So I'm going to go ahead and, and So all I'm doing now is I'm just installing everything that needs to go on it before I power the unit on and then I'm just going to set it on top of my little gigabyte brick so unit over here and then we'll get the rest of it done up. Just pull that. Alright. I don't think we need 
I don't think we need sound right now, but I'm going to go ahead and just plug it in for now. I'm going to do that. I'm going to turn the monitor on and then we will add power to it. And there we go. We're starting to get something happen up on our screen. So we'll just go ahead and wait for it to prompt us here. And then I will go ahead and get uh, that all installed here. There we go. I had to turn off one of my lights here so that way we can actually see. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to install the Raspbian light. And that way we can get this quickly up and going. I did have to select my Wi-Fi network. Depending on your Raspberry Pi model, you may or may not have Wi-Fi available on board. And you'll need either a USB or Ethernet uh, adapter cable to uh, get that all downloaded and if you don't uh, the best thing to do is just download the full version of Raspbian and install it through that method so this method we're not using etcher to burn that image uh, onto the micro SD card we're just using noobs to as the bootloader and the same thing goes for Berry Boot. It does the same thing. Just copy and drag the files on there. Select the OS you want to install. And then away you go. So the one thing about the two of them, they both have different programs throughout them that you can install. So it's kind of cool to be able to use both of them. So keep that in mind. If uh, you're done exploring one bootloader, go over, give the other one a try, and vice versa, and find out what operating systems you like or what you can use for your projects. So I wish I could uh, allow for this thing to actually be a little bit better looking for you. Unfortunately, I don't have my uh, Roxio or my H uh, HDMI capture card hooked up to anything, so I'm unable to do that right now. Um, so you kind of have to do the webcam view for now. So sorry about that. Unfortunately, it does look like it's working here. So we'll get that going here and I'll step you through the next parts here. And like I said, if you have any questions or comments, just post them below or join us over on element14.com. In the description, you'll find the link to this post. Uh, where the files and everything will be so you can post anything there and I'll make sure to respond to them as well there I'll only be watching the comments section here below for the next probably month or two after that I will only uh, respond to questions being posted on element14.com on the video page where the files are okay so I totally installed the wrong version so I went back got the desktop with the GUI on it um, so that's installing right now it's at 100% it should be done pretty quick here and then we'll go ahead and get the desktop up I installed the the light version I wanted the Raspbian with the GUI without all the extras added on uh, which if I had read it properly, it would have told me, but it happens. So we're going to go ahead, get this guy rebooted now, and we'll load up. Now we should actually get to the desktop, and then we'll be able to get VNC installed, and then we can bring it over to the Raspberry Pi 4 to be able to connect remotely to it, and then finish up with it there and then remotely move it over to another location so that way we can work on it over here with the breadboard and whatever else we want so what i'm going to do right away is i'm just going to go ahead and take note of the ip address so that way i can remote into it um, and then I'm just going to go cancel. I'm going to go to the Raspberry Pi icon. Go down to preferences. And 
and then go to Raspberry Pi configuration. And then I just want to um, do, 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 go to interfaces. And then I want to enable uh, VNC. And then click on OK. And then to get that going, all we're going to do is just then reboot the Raspberry Pi. And then we should be able to bring it up over here. So I'm just going to go to my VNC viewer on here. And so let's go to one. 92.168.1.218 we're just going to wait for it to boot up behind us here once we have internet connection we're going to go ahead we're going to hit enter and we're going to connect remotely to it and once that's working then we can move it over here and we don't have to worry about um, the desktop anymore so that looks good so we're just making sure that we do actually get a connection and so username is pi and I haven't changed anything so that should do the trick All right should be And there we go. We now have the desktop here over here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect everything from the Raspberry Pi, bring it over here, and then it will automatically reconnect to the VNC viewer once I get it up and running. So here we go, we have our Raspberry Pi. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in and then allow it to reconnect to the VNC viewer, which you can see on here, it's currently attempting to reconnect. So we'll just go ahead and we'll wait for that guy to do its thing. And there we go, we have the VNC server back up and running on the Raspberry Pi um, 3. All right, so now we can actually start doing some projects on the Raspberry Pi here. We now have a desktop and we have, there we go, let's get them both into view here. And we'll just minimize that guy here. So that's it. That is how you set up your Raspberry Pi. Um, the first time, it's just, it'll ask you, like at this point, I could bring up the terminal and run uh, sudo apt get update and sudo apt get upgrade dash y and let that do its thing. And then after that, what I'm going to do is then, well, while that's doing that, we'll go ahead and we'll continue on with our slides here. Okay, so I already showed you how to um, set that up uh, for the setting up VNC viewer. And so it was basically click the Raspberry Pi icon in the top left corner and select preferences and then finally click on the tab labeled interfaces at this point select the enable button on VNC click on OK in the bottom right and reboot your Raspberry Pi once rebooted sign in to your VNC viewer on taskbar on the top right this will then allow you to connect to it via remote desktop or any other computer regardless of the location if you don't sign in, you will be limited to your local network. Now press Ctrl Alt and T to bring up the terminal window, type ifconfig and hit enter. 
Now, depending if you're on Wi-Fi or Ethernet, uh, look under those in the list and find your INET 192.168.1. whatever it is, or 0. Point whatever it is. Or similar to show you the IP of your Raspberry Pi. Now, when you first um, set it up, it does give you that, and it will show you the IP address. So just make sure you note that right away. And now on any other computer, now you can use that to log into your Raspberry Pi via VNC Viewer. And there is the link there uh, to be able to download it. So today we're not going to talk about the how to SSH into your Raspberry Pi because we're on a Pi and have a Pi on it and we're filming about Pi. So to me, the SSH, if you want, read what I have on it here. Um, but for me, I'm not going to go into too much depth on it just because we won't be using it at the current time because we're just going to use uh, VNC Viewer to do most of our stuff. But all that stuff is there for you, so remember to check that PDF file on element14.com. Once again, it's in the description. So terminal commands. So here's some of the common uh, terminal commands. So sudo apt-get install, whatever the package name is, like uh, sudo apt-get install Arduino. That will then install the Arduino IDE. Yeah, so here we have the sudo apt-get build-det. This command searches for the repositories and installs the build dependencies for the package name. And then you can go uh, sudo apt-get install Arduino space um, whatever else you wanted to install at whatever time. Um, just whatever the package names are that you want. Uh, unfortunately, I do that all in one little shot when I first start up. So there's uh, a couple of different methods that you can install packages and get them done uh, quickly. So maintenance commands. These are pretty common and you'll probably be and you'll probably be using them all the time. It's one of the ones where, um, well, I guess two of them are. The sudo apt get update and the sudo apt get upgrade are probably the ones that you're going to be using the most. Um, the distro upgrade is good to do if you haven't uh, updated your Raspberry Pi in a while or something's not working right uh, from whatever, another update on a program, it might be time to upgrade your distro. And then general commands. Once again, here's a list and you're going to be able to read through all these. Um, once again, uh, print them out, save them, have it as a little cheat sheet there. Um, yeah. The only ones I really like that I think are cool is, uh, well, they're all cool, but doing the app get update, upgrade, clear, uh, those are the ones I use the most. Uh, um, uh, Raspi config, the reboot. Um, I haven't used like the shutdown, but that's an example there. Just general commands that you can do. So then there's also the file and directory commands. And once again, read through these, you're going to get a better understanding of what they do. Okay, so those are going to be your basic uh, file and directory commands here. I'm not going to go over them too much right at the moment. We might touch up on them here in a little bit. But for right now, we're just going to move on forward. Networking and internet commands. So with the networking and internet commands, there is a few you will be using quite often, I assume. Uh, ifconfig is definitely the biggest one. Um, wget, if it's uh, a 
GitHub repository or something that you're wanting to download from GitHub or a file or package that uh, a company has that you need those files, chances are it's going to be a wget command. So system information commands. Here's another really good one. Um, and this will give you a lot more information regarding those system commands. And this is will show you details about your memory, the size and number of partitions on your SD card or hard drive, um, show you what version of Raspberry Pi you're using, a lot of different commands here that will help you along the way to either get a better understanding of Debian or just being able to use your Raspberry Pi to its fullest potential. So now we're going to talk about using the GPIO. The GPIO is your standard pins that can be used to turn devices on and off. For example, an LED. I squared C integrated inter, integrated circuit pins allow you to connect and talk to hardware modules that support this protocol, I squared C protocol. This protocol will typically take up two pins. SPI, Serial Peripheral Interface Bus. Pins can be used to connect and talk to SPI devices, pretty much the same as I squared C, but makes use of a different protocol. UART, Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, is the serial pins used to communicate with other devices. DNC stands for Do Not Connect. This is pretty self-explanatory. Um, the power pins pull power directly from the Raspberry Pi and ground. There are pins that are used to ground your devices. It doesn't matter which pins you use as they all are connected to the same line. So each ground is connected to the exact same line on the Raspberry Pi. Voltages. Two 5 volt pins and two 3V3 pins are present on the board, as well as a number of ground pins, 0 volts, which are unconfigurable. The remaining pins are all general purpose 3V3 pins, meaning outputs are set to 3V3 and inputs are set, inputs are 3V3 uh, negative tolerant. Outputs. A GPIO pin de designated as an output pin can be set to high 3v3 or low 0 volts. Inputs. A GPIO pin designated as an input pin can be read as high 3v3 or low 0 volts. This is made easier with the use of internal pull up or pull down resistors. Pins GPIO2 and GPIO3 have fixed pull-up resistors, but for other pins this can be configured in software. As well as a simple input and output devices, the GPIO pins can be used with a variety of alternative functions. Some are available on all pins, others on specific pins. PWM, Pulse Width Modulation. Software PWM available on all pins. Hardware PWM available on GPIO 12, 13, 18, and 19. I'll leave the SPI for this one. You can kind of see the pin out here for them. I square C. You have the data and the clock on GPIO 2 and 3. And the EEPROM data and clock on 0 and 1. The serial TX is GPIO 14, RX is the GPIO 15. A handy reference can be accessed on the Raspberry Pi by opening the terminal window and running the command pinout. Just to give you an example here, we're just going to open up a terminal window and I'm going to show you here on the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. So if we type pinout, hit enter it's going to give us a list of all our information here on our raspberry pi so as you can see we have the red is 5 volts 
black is ground, one is three, uh, the three volt, and we have two of them, right? And then it's going to give you all the information uh, about your USB ports, your Ethernet, your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, camera ports, all that kind of fun stuff. Because every Pi is kind of different, so it's good to check it out and make sure that you have your Raspberry Pi right. So, if you look at this here, you can see that this down here, this is all the top row, this is the bottom row, and that just means it starts from here and works its way along. So, to me, that's a pretty useful tool. Uh, just because sometimes you're like, oh, where is that stupid ground? And if you don't have the if you don't have the template for on your Raspberry Pi, which they do make, uh, it gets uh, a little frustrating at times. But if you're connected via VNC or have another Raspberry Pi of the same model around you, you can quickly bring that up and be able to tell what's going on there. Okay, I think that's all done there, so I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to reboot the Raspberry Pi here, and then we'll see what's going on. And once again, here's that pinout here, so you can bring that up anytime uh, you want. And it's always good to double check. So let's make a light blink. Why not? For this project, we will need our breadboard some male to female jumpers and some male to male jumpers as well uh, wiring it up we will do a few things first we will start by wiring everything up and then we will connect the raspberry pi to power first we want to place our led in the breadboard uh, for this it's quicker just to place it between both sides of the board in the middle after that run one female gpio pin 6 uh, to the male end on ground on one side and then of the board and then on the other side run the female GPIO pin 7 on the Raspberry Pi uh, to the male to, to the male pin connected to the same row the LED is on and then the final step is to take the resistor of 330 ohms or try a bunch of different values from the ground rail to the pin on the other side of the board um, where we ran the ground lead to and then that's it it's time to fire up the Raspberry Pi so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unplug my Raspberry Pi here and then I'm going to just grab my trusty little box up here full of my Arduino stuff. I know I have uh, resistors and LEDs in my project box. I have some male uh, or female to male connectors in my bin here. So I'm just going to grab that out here and then I'm going to bring up so I'm gonna go orange to ground all I'm gonna do here is I'm going to put uh, the orange is gonna be my ground so I'm gonna put that on the third one down and then I'm going to put this other one on pin 7 which is one down so I'm just gonna uh, we'll put that one here and then we'll just put this over on the ground rail here somewhere and so now I have this on pin 6 on the ground and then pin 7 on the uh, other one here so now that I have that, I need to connect uh, LED through there and then connect uh, resistor th 
through there as well. So I'm just going to open up my Arduino box here and oh let's see what we got here we have we have this guy here um, Okay, so it should look something like that. As you can see, I have the one pin here, and then ground over here, going to here, and then to here. So now I'm just going to go ahead and power the Raspberry Pi on. Okay, so we're back up and running here. So now all we're going to do is we're going to go over to our Raspberry Pi. As you can see, we have no lights on yet. Uh, and hopefully this is one of my LEDs that isn't broken. And then all we're going to do is go to programming. And uh, I want to install. Personally, I prefer MU over the other one for simple Python projects. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to load that up here quickly just because I prefer to use it, which I should have done in the apt-get install packages to show you. So we're just going to go down to programming. I prefer MU. So all the code examples will be available on the website as well. I'm just going to copy and paste it uh, from my notes already because I've done this a few times already so we're just going to go ahead try it see what happens and see what might need to be adjusted um, I do believe there was one error in my notes so once you have your um, Raspberry Pi connected here as you can see here on the screen here I have the ground pin here going to which on mine, the ground rails up one and yeah, it's reversed anyways. So I have my ground going into this rail here on my breadboard and then this resistor coming in and then the female to male pin seven going to the other side of the LED here. So we have MU finally installed. Um, I did, however, change the resolution of the screen. So now you can actually see the full screen here. And all I did to do that was I right clicked on the desktop, went, <clears throat> went to properties. I did remove it so there was no image there. Um, and then all I did was clicked on Start Preferences and then Raspberry Pi Configuration and then went to Set Resolution and then I just changed it to what I needed to use. And then hit OK and rebooted. So since I had to dump all the files on the memory card for the camera, it was a perfect time to get that better so that way you can see it a little better now. Uh, we can always change the GPU memory but since we're not doing anything overly powerful that's GPU specific we don't really need to touch that right at this moment. So now that we have this guy going I'm gonna go ahead and just make this a little bit smaller for right now. There we go that looks a lot better now sitting there on its own. Now, once again, the orange one here is going to the ground rail on my one side of my breadboard. And then it's hitting the resistor, which is then going to the LED. On the other side, I have the pin 7 going directly to the side of the LED, which 
if you wanted to, you could plug it into um, the power side of the rail and then run another jumper, uh, male to male jumper to the pin if you wanted to. So let's have a look here and see what happens. We hit run and then it turns off. So I go stop, run, the LED blinks. So perfect, we've got that set properly. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop that for now. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to bring up our trusty our trusty slideshow here. Now, here's the code for it. Now let's go ahead and go to the next page here to the explanation of the code. So import our pi.gpo as gpio. This imports the GPIO library for Python. And then the import time, this imports the time library for Python. And then GPIO.setMode, uh, GPIO.board, this defines what uh, numbering uh, scheme these pins use. This is the simplest because it allows, because it follows the chart above. Um, so GPIO dot setup, and then we're doing pin seven uh, to GPIO out. Uh, so this tells us uh, tells Python to use that pin seven uh, where the positive wire is plugged in. So that's why it's currently set to off. Once it is um, told to turn on, it will do so. Um, for X in range 0 to 5, this sets the loop of how many times you want the LED to turn on and off. So output 7 to true, this tells Python to turn uh, on pin 7. Uh, Time.sleep is 2, and this tells uh, Python to leave pin 7 on for 2 seconds. And then the GPIO.output 7 uh, false. This tells Python to turn off pin 7, uh, time.sleep2. Uh, this tells Python to stay off for 2 seconds, and then we're just doing gpio.cleanup, and this just cleans up everything after it's completed. So another example of what we can do uh, is we can run the import rpi.gpio gpio as gpio import the time and then set the um, set mode uh, to bcm and then set uh, warnings to false gpio setup to pin 7 to the gpio out and then have it print led on um, and that, then when uh, gpio dot output 7 gpio high uh, time sleep is one and then print LED on and that's when the GPO output is set to low oh, okay there we go so it shouldn't have been it should have said GPIO dot board I don't know why it's just there we go LED on LED off it's working fine now that was my mistake there I'll edit that and make sure it gets uh, there we go Okay, so that has been updated real time here. Well, probably in the past now, but we've updated that. It works. Both examples work now. So that's what we want. I can go ahead and close that out and then close these guys here. 
I'll leave those there for now. Those are doing no harm. So why use Raspberry Pi hats? The number one reason is no soldering required. It enables you to prototype and design quicker. It allows you to test multiple different alternatives quickly. Most have code examples available as well as design files for making your own board. So let's have a look at the Pi Maroni Pi Maroni piano hat. So I do have, where is it hiding? I have it hidden here somewhere. Oh, there it is right there. So we've got this guy here. Let me just bring it up on the desktop here. So here we go. We have the piano hat right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to power down our Raspberry Pi, uh, remove the two jumper cables here, and we'll go ahead and get this guy put on here. I'm going to find a cable to run the audio out uh, as well to a speaker, so that way we can actually play on here and do some stuff with it. So this is what we'll be looking at first. So I'll just be one moment while we swap this out. All right. So I've got my audio cable here. I'm just going to plug that guy into the Raspberry Pi. And then I'm going to go ahead and power it up once again. And then we will get the required software installed for this guy here. Sorry if it's a little bit off. Let's see if I can get that focused a little better here. Like that. Sure, we'll go with that. Features. We have 16 captive touchpads. We have 13 piano keys, octave up and down buttons, instrument cycle buttons, 16 bright white LEDs, and two microchip cap 1188s, captive touch driver chips. Uh, you can use it to control software or hardware since over MIDI and the piano hat pinout um, compatible with all 40 pin header raspberry pi models there is a python library and it comes fully assembled so installing on the raspberry pi with the power of github we don't have to worry about code or projects disappearing only if the owner takes it down so for this we will go to the github page here uh, for the piano hat but wait we're not going to actually uh, in a new terminal window uh, we'll type the the command is um, how it's done here and then what we'll do is actually you know what we're going to just install a pi, pi maroni uh, dashboard i love this dashboard um, and then we'll find them uh, once it's all installed here. So let's get that installed first. All right, so I'm just going to go over here and we're just going to bring up a terminal window and we're going to paste that in there. And that should install everything on there that we need to get it going. We're going to go through the steps here and make sure it all works well like there's three different ways you can install it so depending if you're doing it without a headless uh you know without a gui whatever you want to use uh, you have options to get it installed properly and get it up and running quickly all right so we should have that under so under accessories so i'll bring this up here so now that's finished installing here. That's how quick and easy it is, quick and painless. Uh, and we're just going to close that. We're going to go here. Then we're going to go to accessories. And then we'll see the dashboard here. We're going to go ahead and click yes. And then yes. So I'm just going to select uh, the number two here. Oh, no, sorry, number one, because it is a hat, not a fat. 
and you can actually see all the different stuff that uh, Pi Moroni uh, has and which to me is great because they have a large uh, community and I've had times where I've bought in Raspberry Pi hats and then I'm like oh that's a good deal I better I, I can grab one of those and then to find out that there's no documentation on it there's nothing out there or it's really really vague and you have to do a lot of homework to even get it to do anything uh, so keep that in mind know the community your board's coming from so that way you know you get the best experience um, yeah stick to the communities that are, are big and built like that like my raspberry or my my pie kate i do have one of those uh, which is also another pie Maroni product i have a couple other of their products as well and I enjoy the fact that they're all quick and easy to get up and running so I can get my projects going quickly. So with that, we're going to go down to the piano hat, select it, and now it's automatically going to do all the work for us. We don't have to do anything. We just sit back, relax, let it update. Drink coffee. to continue and then we're just going to go to quit so now it said our uh, examples will be in this folder here so let's go to CD Pi Maroni I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly so LS CD piano hat LS and then we're going to go CD examples LS. And now let's just try uh, one uh, as an example here. So I'm just going to bring up this guy. And let's just try uh, ooh, Python leds.py. And there we go we've got some action it was that quick and easy to get up and running with Pimori so now we got the LEDs going here we're just gonna let that finish its cycle I, I'll probably just kill it um, but I wish that didn't look so bad I'm sorry about that guys so now that we've done that we're gonna go ahead and try the uh, Python uh, simple piano dot pi so hopefully with my speaker plugged in here we should be able to get some audio output oh there we go we've got some piano action here let me turn that up playing the piano so let's see if I can turn that up all right let's try something else here So let's try Python uh, 8 bit synth. Let's see what happens here. Oh, yeah, I don't care for that one too much. So, through here, we do have a manual install of how to get everything installed manually, but 
we did it nice and quick and simple on the Pymori dashboard. So we didn't have to worry about that. So documents and support. Check the description also available on Pymori. Uh, and yeah, go to the forums there. If you have any issues whatsoever, they will be there to help you out. So let's have a look at the scroll fat. Now we had a hat, now we have a fat. So let's take a look at it here. I'm just going to disconnect the Raspberry Pi. All right, so there we go. I've got that going. So let's have a look here. Here it is right here. So how much do you want to bet it's going to be pretty simple to install this hat? Well, this one here actually requires you to solder the pins on it. Hence, you can kind of see my really bad soldering job on it. But hey, I was waiting for my class to start and I was at the makerspace not using my own soldering iron. So hey, that's what I'm going to use as an excuse. I wasn't using my stuff. So let's have a look here. I'm just going to bring up this guy here and I'm not even going to look at my notes. I know exactly what I'm going to have to do now that I have that, that dashboard here. So I'm going to go to accessories. I'm going to go to the dashboard. Hopefully it launches here. Oh. There we go. So now this time we're going to go to number two, the, it's a P hat or fat. So we're just going to go to enter and then we're going to go down to the scroll fat. Now it's not the HD version. This is just the, uh, non HD version. The HD version looks awesome, but I got a deal on this guy, so that's what we're using. So we're going to do that. We're going to install that now. It's running right now. And then we'll give a few examples, a quick test. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to get this thing going. There, we'll try it right there. So that's fully installed now. I'm gonna go ahead, press enter. Then I'm gonna press quit. And then we're gonna to go to our examples here. So uh, CD All right, so now we have the example codes here. So let's go ahead and try a couple of them out here. So let's go Python, CPU, Pi, and see what happens here. Oh, we got some action here. That's not bad. I'm going to try and open up uh, uh, the web browser here and see what happens. There we go. So now we're getting some more action happening on here of the CPU usage. And as you can tell, she's fully lit up. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to close that out. And it's going to drop it down. So that's not bad. That worked pretty well. These LEDs are a bit bright. But as you can see, as CPU usage is going, 
it's working awesome so all I'm doing to stop it is pressing control Z and that usually stops my um, whatever Python program that I'm running so let's go ahead and try the sine wave here so Python uh, sine there we go that's pretty sweet I actually did this one in class I got a picture of it um, the guy running it and I thought that was pretty cool that he got it going uh, remember all the guys that were in my class none of them had experience with the Raspberry Pi and it was pretty amazing some of the projects they were coming up with at the end of the course and just being able to uh, play around with this stuff to get to know um, the Raspberry Pi better and feel more comfortable with touching it, breaking it, resetting it, doing it again, breaking it again, and repeating until they got their project working. So control Z, once again, that killed it for me. I'm pretty sure there's another button that we could use, but that's what I just use. So, um, I don't know, let's go Python, uh, local weather. I'm not sure it'll do it. Yeah, I don't have that set up there, so we're just going to clear that. LS, what else can we try? Um, ah, let's try Python binary clock. There we go. We got some binary clock action going down there. So that's basically it when it comes to the hats, the Pymori. Uh, definitely some of the best ones I've ever used just because of the ease of use and you can get them up and running in no time at all so make, make sure to check out their website um, all the links are in the PDF as well uh, so if I don't have them in the description and the video description make sure to check the link for the element 14 and remember like I said do your own homework on the Raspberry Pi hats that you're gonna buy and make sure you buy something that there is a community built around it and or there is the material out there for you to get that information to get it up and running and start uh, programming because all these Python examples that we have on here we could take we can alter them change them up and make them work uh, for what we wanted so for example with the Pi Hat, we could set it to make all the buttons uh, quick links for doing video editing on the Raspberry Pi or um, setting it for shortcuts for Audacity or whatever we wanted to for recording or, or whatever if we wanted website links to be on them. Whatever we wanted to do, we could do it with this little guy here. So and then outputting data with the examples we have it's pretty quick and easy to get something going so that we can actually make our own custom stuff as well for this so for example if you wanted to make um, a YouTube um, uh, subscriber counter or a tweet uh, a Twitter or discord sort of notification system you could definitely do it with this okay so it has just a quick overview of the um, scroll fat it does have five rows of 11 55 total bright white LEDs uh, matrix wide brightness control control um, so we could turn that brightness down to make it look a little better but I think it's maxed out just for the examples to make it look that much more awesome. Basically compatible with every Raspberry Pi that has a 40 pin GPIO. It does have the Python library uh, included in those examples. But the only thing is the female header does require to be soldered on. Um, and that's it. Um, all the info on installing it just in case you need a refresher is all in the PDF file all the manual install all the development stuff 
alternative libraries, that's on there as well. Uh, documents and support, we got them on there as well. Uh, the Docker image uh, as well. So what to do next? Well, there is tons of things to do next. Search through the books and magazines from Raspberry Pi to get more info on your next project. Make tons of projects uh, to learn the code and make sure to adjust and alter code to see what you can make happen. Uh, you should have no issues finding more project ideas. If you get stuck, you can always reach out on the forums on raspberrypi.org or send me an email and we can see what we can do to help. Uh, join communities and start learning and playing around today. If you haven't hit that like button, make sure you do so now. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, make sure to do that as well. So I would like to thank you all for taking my quick beginner's course for the Raspberry Pi. We did focus on the Raspberry Pi 3 this time because to me it's just a very um, useful board now still even though the Pi 4 is out I still love using the Raspberry Pi 3. If I didn't I wouldn't have one on my wall behind me. So with that being said Thank you for watching, everyone. You have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time. Take care, eh?